implementation is always one of the, uh, I won't call it a roadblock, but it's one of the more difficult things that we face, the challenges that we face, is large implementation. So I want to, want to talk about best practices uh, for implementation. A little bit about what we do first before we get into the implementation part of it. Um, our motto is we help our customers succeed, and we do that by providing process control equipment and strategies, uh, process-related training, remote real-time process control with our eDART system. Um, we can monitor the process remotely from anywhere in the world, and we do consulting as well. So that's, that's what we do. Some of the benefits of decoupled molding, I think it's important to know what's, what's out there. What are you going to get for your investment and your implementa implementation efforts? Uh, so here are some of the benefits. Building and documenting a robust process. Uh, that, a lot of that has to do with training. Uh, we teach you how to build processes that will withstand what we call normal variation. There's always normal variation in a process, whether it's process related, material related, machine related. And we, we can teach you how to optimize your process to withstand that normal variation. The other, obviously, is to reduce scrap. By control, by using control, um, we're able to minimize the variation and the effect on the process using a control function in the cavity, using pressure as a control function. Uh, make processes machine independent. This is, this is kind of a big one for a lot of folks. Um, you put, put a process, a mold in machine A with this process, move it to machine B, very difficult to match that process. Um, with some of the training that we give and some of the methodologies, you're able to do that. Uh, matching templates, uh, verifying machine capabilities, things like that. So reduce time to production on new tools. This, is, this can be important as well. You can see the benefit there, I'm quite sure. See any changes that occur in the process real time. I come from a production environment and there's nothing worse than trying to sit down the next day and discuss all the issues that happened the night before without data. Uh, there are a lot of opinions flying around. It, it turns into quite a discussion. If you've got data to look at, it's, it's not an issue. You know, you know exactly what happened, when it happened, and why it happened. Eliminate customer returns uh, on molding defects. Uh, I had a conversation with one of my customers last week, and they were very upset because they actually had a return part. Um, after an implementation, and we got to talking, and wh what had actually happened, it was a short shot, and there was moisture in the tool. Somehow they had had a water leak, and they got some moisture in the tool. They shipped one short shot, and we were talking about that, and uh, I, the, I asked the question, how many parts di have you produced since you've instrumented this tool? Way in the millions, millions and millions. Uh, high cavitation tool, fast cycle time, and this was their, this was their first reject on that tool. And they were upset about it, and their customer was upset about it. So we started talking about before they did the implementation, and it was a monthly occurrence. You know, they're doing corrective actions every month. And it was just, it was a good conversation. You could really see the benefits of, of this product. Uh, use data to optimize cycle times. Uh, I do this a lot. I, I do a lot of demos with the eDART system for potential customers, and we're almost always able to reduce cycle time 5 to 10%. You, you don't know what you don't know, and when you see that data, um, it, it's easy to make those optimizations and adjustments. Have historical data for every part produced forever, and we can we'd be happy to show you how that works over here. We have we have some systems out on the plant floor; they're networked, and we can we can look at historical data right here in the booth of what's happened since the show started. So that's that's some of the benefits of decoupled molding. Here. Herein lies part of the problem. This is not a plug and play system. Uh, it works, it works every time, it will optimize any process, um, it will make it better. Now the, the amount that it makes it better is it depends on, tool, there's some other issues, tool design, the material selection, uh, your machine, all those things are factors to be considered. <clears throat> but all in all, this is not a plug and play system. There's things that have to be done and this is, this is part of the implementation process. Um, it's a, it, it requires a balance of training and equipment and instrumentation. There's, there's a balance there and there's a way to go about this. And what we're going to talk about is some of our more successful customers, how they've approached the solution for implementation. So, and, and this is pretty much, this is a pretty common list. Stabilize the current process. 
I get a lot of feedback from potential customers saying, we're not ready for the technology. We don't need the EDART yet because we, we're not, our, our processes are completely out of control. If you, if you use the EDART correctly without cavity pressure sensors, put it on the machine, you now have visibility of the process. You can see what happened, when it happened, why it happened, and you can start to optimize and stabilize those processes. Evaluate the training needs. We have online training assessment test, um, which is it's a great tool. You can have all your folks take this online. It takes about 15, 20 minutes. And from there, we can look at, by the questions that were answered correctly and incorrectly where that person needs to start in our training program. Great tool. Um, I think it's on our website. You can go to our website, find that. Management commitment is huge. If you're not driving this from the top, chances are it's not going to happen. You've got to have management support. Define a champion, another huge factor. Somebody on the floor, uh, the, a technical person on the floor, also has to take the, take the reins of this thing and drive it. Otherwise, success is probably not going to happen. Somebody on the floor has to be excited about this and push it with management support. We call that a champion. And it's, it's never a bad idea to have multiple champions. You, uh, we've seen this in the past a lot where one guy is very passionate about it, uses it, pushes it, teaches people, trains people, but he is the champion. He's driving it on the floor and something happens to him. He leaves the company, it dies. So uh, before, you know, this champion, his responsibility is to get other people excited about it. And generally what happens if there's enough time, other people get excited about it and it continues to grow. Very important to have that champion. From that point, we liked, this is, the 80-20 rule applies very well here. Look at your process. Now you've, you've got visibility. You've maybe put some e-darts on some problematic presses and you know what's going on. You've stabilized your process. Maybe you're still having to make process adjustments, but you know why now. You know what are the problem tools, they're visible. Use the 80-20 rule, get the 20% of those problematic jobs and start with them. Optimize those with cavity pressure sensors or temperature sensors or whatever data uh, driven, whatever you need to get data driven uh, information so you can, you can make good, good choices on optimizing those processes. So use the 80-20 rule. Instrument of those 20% of problematic, if, if it's a mold issue, you know, if, if somebody cut the mold wrong and the shrink rate's not right, you're not gonna, probably not gonna fix that with a, a cavity pressure sensor. So you gotta use, um, and then this is very important. We don't do this enough. Measure and share the success. You've got to show that this is working to continue forward. You're trying to keep that management support, right? You need that. Um, they got the checkbook. They're gonna help you uh, keep it rolling and give you what you need financially. And if you're not showing them that you're, they're getting a return on their investment, um, it's probably not gonna work, work out very well for you. So that's important as well.